to tell the story. True story. So, what is it, what, what is it, Kevin, what do you say? It's for true or something? Something's really true, he said, for real. So this is for real. <laughs> for real. This happened for real. So we didn't have a whole bunch of money. James, you know about that. We didn't have a whole bunch of money. So I, it was Valentine's Day, being kind of a schmoozy, kind of, a bit of a softy, I thought I'm gonna get my wife a rose. Hey, it's going so far it's going good. So I went and I and I checked them out. I checked these roses out. It had to be perfect in every way. No brown petals, everything looking marvelous. We well, get the cheaper ones, the ones that are brown for slightly less money, right? But we don't want that. This is for my wife, my bride, my love. And so I checked this rose over, it's wonderful. And you know, sometimes you get a, a rose, you know, these roses when they get close to dying, like the, the stem bends, this one was perfect. I'm so proud of myself, I could hardly stand me. <laughs> Wrap that up, I said. So I bring it home. I'm feeling really pretty good about this. And so here we are, Valentine's Day. Like it kept overnight, it didn't wilt or anything. I give it to my wife, and she looks at it, and she gets this quizzical look on her face. She says, it's plastic. <laughs> for true, for true, for real. So, for real. It's plastic. But I said, no, no, honey. It, it might be, but, but this way you don't have to. <laughs> I remember making my case, I was failing miserably. <laughs> it's, you never have to water it, <laughs> dust it off once a month. Just, there it is, and it's, it's perfect in every way. And, uh, and I don't have to buy you another one next year. <laughs> Did I score any points that day? No. So that's a story on me. Just for real. I gotta write that down. For real. Gotta write that down. So then I see this uh, real. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, underline that puppy. Then I see this. I don't want to say I'm tight, I'm just thrifty. I see this Valentine's card. This Valentine's, this, you know, get the card, it was a beautiful card. It was on the television. And, and uh, I, wanna, I wanna make sure it's, it's, it says, it said on the front, a big heart, looked like it was a kind of a floral pattern, right? It said, Happy Valentine's Day, right on the front of the big card. And you open it up, and it says for the next year too. <laughs> Women aren't laughing, okay, never mind. <laughs> For real, for real. But I was never gonna buy that long, never. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I just thank Father for being in the house this morning. And when Father shows up, it just, it, things just, it's like, um, I've heard it said something like popcorn, things just start to happen. And that's when these words came out. Uh, that's when uh, the Holy Spirit makes himself known. It can happen in worship, it can happen during the preaching service, it can happen on your way even here. And it's just the goodness of God. It's just the goodness of God. And that's what I wanna to talk to you a little bit about this morning, the goodness of God. God is good. And uh, we even have, we've got it all figured out, right? Uh, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Now remember you said that. And you're right, by the way. And you're right, by the way. He's got nothing but your best interest at heart.
But I sometimes wonder, how is it that we can sometimes come in and just, I, I, I'm, Kev uses the word challenge. My pastoral way, I'm gonna say, can I lean on you just a little bit? It's the same thing, but just, can I lean? Oh, well, yeah, you can do that. And I sometimes wonder, why is it we can come to a service, come to anything, to a prayer meeting, come to Friday evening, uh, where, where, where God's just unleashed, and we kind of go out an awful lot the same way that we came in. How's that? Has that ever happened to you? Maybe you're preoccupied, maybe there's things that you're dealing with, and I can take a look around because people have allowed me to come close to them and to talk with them. I can say without a shadow of a doubt, there's people here that are dealing with stuff, big stuff this morning, life-changing stuff, waiting for breakthrough. And I'm not talking about stuff that we've been waiting for a week. I know some of you have been waiting for months. Some of you have been even waiting for years. Is that you? Don't put up your hand. Is that you? And it's really easy to get discouraged. That's when you pray those prayers and you think they're just running down my lip. God's helping the people in Africa or something. He's, I, he doesn't, he's not getting it. But he does. But he does. And I have to say for me, there are prayers that I have prayed. I'm not saying this is you. That I'm really glad the Father didn't answer them when I thought he should. Right? I think, gosh, if I could help God out, this would be an amazing world. And he says, <laughs> yeah, what's that? For real. <laughs> but Father doesn't need any help. He just needs us to be open. And, uh, well, and when you're talking about that tornado coming through, I think we need to be in that place as believers in God to step into it. Step in the way of blessing. Get on the road. It's a blessing train. Jump on the track, right? And just let it wash over you. Let it do what it has to do. And that's what we do. But Father, I don't, I don't know if there's too many people in heaven that have been arm wrestled into heaven. I don't know. Maybe they have. But I think somewhere it all starts with us saying, yes, Lord. I don't understand it all. Right, Bev? And speaking with Bev, I'm going to, Tell a little bit. I said, Bev, how are you this morning? She said, better week than last week. We just celebrate. They get all giddy, right? And, and the, other, the other part of this is, is that we think that because, at least I used to think that, that because I'm a Christian and because I go to church and, and, and I tithe, right? We talked for real, talked about tithing, and, and that I'm okay. But did you know, I think it was a, a Jewish chap that wrote a book, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. We don't need to spend our life there, but what I'm saying is there's going to be things that are going to come along and test you. And I sometimes wonder some of that stuff is, well, how serious are you? How easily are you knocked off your game? How deep are your roots? How bad do you want it? Because there's going to be things along, and that's, that's what the enemy is good at, just kind of push, trying to push us off our game. But thank you, Father, that you are greater. Thank you, Father God, that you are more than able. Thank you, God, that we're the head and not the tail. Thank you, God, that we're above and not beneath. And when the heat's on, when things aren't going well, that's what we hang on to. That's been paid for at an amazing price. An amazing price. And if I don't hang on to that, then I've, I've let something precious slip away. It, it just falls to the ground like mercury. I was dumb enough as a kid, I played with mercury. I explained some of my cerebral or lack of function. <laughs> Not for real. <laughs> so God is good all the time. We were made for such a time is this. The some of us, depending on, on how you came into the world, it's, uh, I'll speak for me, it's easy, to, and this isn't a poor me thing, but it's just how the enemy sometimes tries to mess with us. You think I'm an accident. What am I doing here? But you know what? And Father's plan is for such a time.
time as this. You people, every one of you were born for this moment. And in him you are fully equipped. In him you are more than able. Does that mean you're going to walk, you're going to walk without, without getting uh, dinged on? Or, or right? It just comes. Welcome to the human race. So God is good all the time. And that's something that we need to hang on to when things are maybe not going on uh, like we would like them to go on. Does that make sense? Anybody here like that? Okay. Good, good, good. And you get, you get these verses. And you know when Kevin was kind of not preaching, but he was. I loved it. It's, he's right on the money. He's right on the money. I thought I could just sit down and we've had church. We've had church. Because what he said was truth. I came across this. First Thessalonians. This is by Paul. You don't have to put it on the screen, it doesn't matter. It's the uh, fifth chapter, 16th verse. Are you ready for the challenge? I'll wait for you to find it. Bev is on page 2204. <laughs> I'm here to help, I'm that kind of a guy. Here it is. So this, when you start understanding some of this stuff, Betty Hinn talks about naming your day. Some of us believe that we are victims of circumstance and, oh God, I hope it doesn't get any worse than what it is. Wrong. That's so wrong. Because Christ living in you, isn't that right? Christ living in you. I can name my day before my my. Little fuzzy feet hit the floor and go into my bunny slippers, right? I can name my day. You have the power to name your day. Did you name your day this morning? No hands. Did you name your day this morning? I believe that we can determine what kind of a day we're going to have. Because you've got that kind of power resident within you. If you can pray for the dead to be raised, naming your day should be pretty straightforward. Right? And we can do that. Before we ever even get out of bed. I know it. Isn't that the good news? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Here we are. First Thessalonians. Fifth chapter. Sixteenth verse. First two words. You ever read some of those words and I think, oh, I know the scripture. I know it's true. But why is that in there? Chris, you know, you get me. Why is that in there, right? And it says rejoice always. Do you think Father knew that there's going to be those kinds of days, those kinds of circumstances where I don't feel like rejoicing? Feelings are bar, you know. And feelings, it's good to have feelings. I feel love for my wife. She still loves me after that rose a thing. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, for real. But Father knew there's going to be those things. And that's not to be afraid of that stuff. Because once you, and I love, I love that when we're um, down in Bethel, the, and we're doing it here, our year one in our school, we spend a whole year telling you who you are in Christ. What you carry in Christ. The whole deal is, and how many times you know you can hear something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of us don't, we don't receive. I, I had, when I was younger, I had trouble receiving. Someone ping off my house, I could get into that. But some, some of us have trouble receiving for whatever reason. And there's all kinds of things that pop up. Well, uh, if you knew my past, uh, if you knew that I missed two Sundays in a row, if you knew that, uh, yeah, that whole tithing thing, I've got to get on that. If you knew, Father, too late! No surprises go across his desk. He already knows. But we have the opportunity to choose. Not to be bantied about, right? We can name our day. Father, thank you for today. I'm Father, I'm, I'm still breathing, right? Without the aid of an iron lung. Reasonably coherent. Two cups of coffee will help that. 
right? Cocoa Puffs, I'm good to go, right? We bought these cups when we were in Bethel at Hebrews. It's really good. It says, it says uh, I should have bought a whole bunch of them, but you know how expensive they are. Anyways, so I bought this one, I bought this cup, and it says Bethel on one side. Oh, how nice. But you look at the other side, because I'm right hand, that everybody sees, it says revival in a cup. Come on. I don't think it's scripture, but it's very, very close. <laughs> First two words. I'm teasing you a bit here. First two words. Rejoice always. That's not what it says, so, but I, yeah, there's a piece of music that goes, damn it. Thanks, buddy. I work, I work tunnel, okay. So, <laughs> I just messed with you. But yeah, and there's a good piece of music, and again, I say rejoice. Why is that in there? Because rejoicing is so important. It is so important. And, and, and so, so, so God knows that for him to put that, have that in, in, the, in our word, he knows there's going to be those days when you can't find the children's socks. Those days when the um, car's not running like it should. Those days when your spouse has got bad breath. Those days. I mean, those things that come to challenge every one of us. Well, it doesn't apply to here or you. But, but there's a good, I'm just being a bit silly, but there's going to be those things that real challenges. And there's people that got challenges we can't even imagine. But in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of what's going on, irrespective of what's happening, it says rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice always. I choose, even though things look, they suck, right? Sorry, things are not going well, We'll just scratch that from the tape later on. Things are not going well. I choose to rejoice. <coughs> I'll get to the to that word. You know, keep me uh, water, please. The um, in in the, in the word. Thank you. It talks so much about rejoicing. It talks so much about making your own mind up. It talks so much about moving forward. So rejoice always. So that is not dependent on what's going on. And when I say that, I'm talking about whatever, I mean, just a quick show of hands. I, I'm not gonna ask what it is. Is anybody here still praying for something, believing for something? Or her? Take a look around, leave your, leave your hand. Thank you so much for helping me. Take a look around, we all are. We all are, thank you for that. We all are. And in the midst of that, and some of the stuff that we're praying for, so in paying off your house, I haven't prayed that. I, man, I gotta get busy, I guess. For real. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, he would use that word in Bethel. Yeah, for real. That means like it's really, really true. Like that, that other stuff I told you wasn't quite true, but just for real, this is really true. <laughs> and it's just staying the course. Danny Silk talks about it's just one little phrase, and I think it's so good. He says, you know, we need to bring our own sunshine. We need to bring our own sunshine. I love to be encouraged, but sometimes that person isn't close by. And, but when you, when you just step into the, uh, into, the, into the presence of God, one of the things uh, I learned, and some of the stuff you learn is sort of like, um, somebody just pops it out, and you go, oh, I got that. They're talking about, uh, like the teachers that work at Bethel, and it's not unusual, you go down the hallway, I guess they got little rooms off the side, I don't know. But you can hear worship music, you can hear prayer in a different room, you hear speaking in tongues in another room, they're bringing their own sunshine. And that's what we need to do. Irrespective of what's going on. See, I made, <laughs> I made the mistake that I need to understand what's going on. Wrong. We just know that that's, that's what's in front of us, but I have a Heavenly Father who loves me so, who, lo who loves you so. Turn to somebody and say, you know what? God is nuts about you. Two or three people, quick, quick. He's nuts about you. <laughs> You're one of the best things he's ever done. You're not a mistake. You have value. You're gonna change the world. You're here for a plan and a purpose, right? Oh my goodness, it feels so good. 
Feel the atmosphere change? Just, ooh, oh, I can stay here. Rejoice always. Then there's the other one. I, I really like this. Pray without ceasing. Well, what happens if I have to drive my car and I have to talk on the phone and somebody calls me and how do I pray then? Without? I think really what it is talking about, is it on there? Thank you, weird people. <laughs> Way back. Is that just to have it, I think there's an attitude. Would you agree with me? There's an attitude of prayer. There's an attitude of prayer. It's not uncommon, it's, and I think it's a habit. Something happens, hopefully good. Usually the first words out of our mouths, Lord and I, thank you, Jesus. Isn't that true? Thank you, Jesus. But when those things come to visit you, you think, this is, this is wow, this is a tough one. That prayer might be, thank you, Jesus, that you give me everything I need to see my way through. Isn't that amazing? So that's how you come into that place of being undefeated. That's how you come into that place where you are greater than. By myself, John, pretty sad. I've seen John all by himself. It's ugly. It's not pretty. For real. But, <laughs> but when Father comes, when Father resides in me, there's something... Never mind. There's something that happens. <laughs> yeah, I know. Small things amuse small, my, my mom would say. God rest your soul. For real. But it's to have an attitude of prayer. And when can you pop those off? Any time. Any time. He has a listening ear. And he wants to hear from you. You see, all the stuff that we were talking about, we we're praying about, Kevin was releasing this morning, it's already in place. Somehow I think, uh, I've heard it where, uh, there was a, where people feel they need to chase after God. I need to hunt him down. I need to find out where he lives. He lives in your heart. It's too late, he's got you. Right? You've already got it. And that's when you're moving. That's why you can look at those circumstances and say, get thee behind me. Or, you know what? I don't, I, sometimes things happen and I don't understand. But I don't have to. Father does and he's got it. He's got it. Does that make sense? So whatever it is that you're wrestling with and in your mind, just put the, okay, Father's got this thing. I don't know how he's going to work it through. What's that prayer? Father, and I prayed it myself, Father, you would make a way where there is no way. And I think, that sounds kind of, how can I, how could you say that out loud? That's because I, Sue, I don't see a way. It doesn't change the fact that there is a way. From my perspective, I maybe don't have that yet. Maybe I don't have the revelation. But I know that Father loves me, and there's so much that he has done. There's so much that he has written in here. These pieces of music, amazing. He's already doing, he's on the job. He's on the throne. He's just waiting to hear from us. I don't have to hunt him down. He's got me. He's got you. He's got you under his... Um, he's got you. And it's just that simple. He's, and, and, and we've got, I don't say this in an arrogant way, you carry the full load. Like when our little people come up from downstairs, wherever they are, they carry the full load. They maybe don't know how to handle it just yet. How old was our granddaughter when she prophesied over her mom that she would have a child? Six years old. And she'd gone through two miscarriages. And the little one, so I'm, 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 I'm reading, I'm telling you the story, I think if she can get it, I stand a chance. We stand a chance. She's walking with her mom, and uh, she's a six-year-old, right? They sometimes don't have the language for what father is doing, but this is how it came out. Mom, are, are, are you okay? I think they walked into a park or something. Yeah? You're all right. Yes, Shaylee. Daughter's name. Is your tummy okay, Mom? Yes. Why do you ask? Good question. Learning how to write, ask. I learned about that. You gotta ask good questions. 
Shady says, because God just told me that in 12 weeks that you will have a baby in your tummy. Totally disarmed mother who had just gone through two miscarriages without a, I don't know how that word would have hit her. And on the 12th week, she conceived. We carry, you carry, the full load. And you start reading all the stuff and you think, wow, these, that guy did that, that guy, that, that woman did that, that, that kid did that. That's you. That's you. There's nothing that we can't pray over. Nothing. So whatever that thing is in your life, you think it's just so, I don't know how we're going to get over this. But God. Right? And I just take a look around the room. There's people have done huge exploits. I think of Detlef and some of the stuff he's done. I, 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 not just to highlight him. I know other people have done amazing things. But some of the stuff, you, you, how are we going to do this thing? And somehow finances are raised up. There's a way made because Father's in it. And I would release the same thing over you. What is it that's in your way? What is it you see as an obstacle? What do you think, I just don't know how we're going to get... That's not your job to figure out the how thing. You just have to believe for. Have you ever heard that? I'm believing for. And that's for each one of us. That's for you. That's for this morning. That's how we change our world. That's how we make things happen. Wow. Oh, I love this next one. In everything, give thanks. Well, you don't know what happened to me. Don't need to. You have no idea how my children disrespected me this morning. Don't need to know about that. I'll pray with you. But what it says in everything give thanks, it says when I give thanks to my Heavenly Father, who has given each one of us, hopefully our next breath. Something goes on here. We're trained. We can do this stuff. Got an R in here. and Just kind of do all those good things for you. But our giving thanks is not to be determined by our circumstance. Our thanks is to be determined by the fact that God loves you. He has a plan for you. Oh, I'm going to get to that scripture. That's an even gooder one. They're all good. But he's, he's got it all figured out. And it's just a case of, okay, Father, I don't, I don't quite get where I'm going. It doesn't matter. If Father's in it, does that make sense? I'm not trying to be presumptuous. I don't want anybody to feel bad, but I think it's, it's, it's the promise. It's the full package, and it's there for every one of us. It's there for you, and it's there for me. And that's why you hear once in a while, we are powerful people. How did that happen? It's in the book. I don't have to know how, but I do have to know that it is. You got it. It is. So what is it that's trying to give you grief? And so in everything I give thanks. There's a scripture which, which identifies a little better. I may have time to bump into that. The scripture talks about giving thanks in everything. Interesting word, in. Not necessarily for everything. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. But in the midst of it, I can still give Father thanks in the middle of what would seem like a, the most horrific storm has come to visit me. Worse yet, you want to upset a parent, have something happen to other children. And in the middle of that, we can still offer thanks. Why can you do that for the circumstance? Because I know Father's in control. I know that he's got a way out. I know that he's got a way through whatever it is that's trying to give us grief. Does that make sense? Are we still tracking? You know the little bobbleheads? Some over here, some over here, some. Mark, you and I have to talk after. That's the same guy. I'm going to tell a story. Uh, you pushed me, you provoked me. So he's handing out tithing envelopes this morning. I politely accept one, stands there and he gives me another one. Hey! <clears throat> okay. For this, I know I was upset. No, I wasn't. 
And the last piece of this verse, verse 16, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's what he wants for you. Don't we want to please Father? That's what he has for you. That's his will for you. That's not for real. Faith, and it's all wrapped, it, it's all wrapped up in faith as well, isn't it? Faith is, is, is uh, believing for things often, for things that we don't see in the natural. But if the God breathed, it's not a question of if, it's just a question of when. When will that come to you? And if it's Father's will, it's going to come to you, no matter what. Page two. Pretty. Yeah, I got a lot here. I got plenty. We go. Always makes me nervous when Brent does that. Oh, 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 first page 15. Oh, Brent, Brent. Wow. Psalm 119, verse 6 8. And again, this is all that God is good. We need to remember that. If you lose sight of that, you're done like a dinner. Psalms 119, verse 68. And it says, you are good and do good. That's him releasing that over you. It's got nothing to do with, do I deserve it? It's got nothing to do with, can I earn this thing? It's got nothing to do with how good looking you are. <laughs> it's got nothing to do. He has purposed to do good in you and through you. When we prayed for our um, um, jam leaders, Jesus and me, people took the care of our young people downstairs, we just prayed the fullness of God because you get so full of God, it has to come out. It just has to, or it, side story, for real. Here I was and, you know, Kevin showed me the highlights in, in, in and ready. So we went to the In and Out Burger place. And uh, I was just like vibrating. Like, oh, Kevin, this is just like, it's like high test fuel. Like, whoa, man. I just, you just gotta tell, you know, something good happening. It's like, you just, I just, Earl, I just gotta tell somebody. They're gonna get it. The full load, you know, uncensored. You get them out. That's how I felt. So here I am sitting at the in and out place. And beside me were two adult women and their daughter, 17, 18 years of age. That's to my left. On the other side of them was a man who was having a really hard time with life. And I, felt, and I knew he was, when he got up to get, I don't know what he's going for, catch up or something, he had trouble navigating his way. I don't say that in judgment, I'm just saying that's, that's the picture. Does that make sense? No judgment here. And when he came back with his ketchup, we'll say, all he wanted from that lady, and it was just as pure as pure could be, all he wanted from that lady was this. Just a touch. It was that, that quick. And he sat down. I could hardly contain myself. Because what happened there, and it was just that simple, to, you know, we talk about being Jesus to somebody, it was just, it would have been very easy, because I'm gonna bet that guy didn't have his right guard on, he missed a day or two of shaving, he, he, he's got some issues, right? But that lady, in the most simple way, ministered to him, something I'm capable of doing, just touching something. And my eyes are like, they're filling up. I'm like, man, man. So, as shy as I am, I, I <laughs> and you're not helping. <laughs> I, I spoke with this woman. I said, do you realize what just happened? And she's just like bubbling over as well. 
And I said, you just made that man's day. And it was just as simple as a touch. That's all it was. Can you do that? Yes, you can. Can I do that? Yes, I can. It was amazing. The woman went on to say, talked about her daughter who watched what happened. Talk, you know, talked about the best lessons of these life lessons, and that's what happened for her. She saw, and she explained to her daughter what just happened. I'm like, wow. Where was I going? I don't know, it wasn't where I was going. It was a good story. But just being so full of the Holy Spirit, it's got to find expression. You know, I know this guy, he's so full of the Holy Spirit. When the snowstorm was on, he would drive around looking for people to pull out of ditches. I know. God gave me this truck, and I'm going to just help people. That's what he does. He's in our own body here. I won't embarrass him. But it's just the heart as big as all the doors. So back to Psalm 119. You are good. And here's, and here. So because you are good, it's got nothing to do with how you feel. You have to understand that because Father has fashioned you just as, as he has, and because he lives in you, that's where our value comes from. And if that's true, nobody can take it away. Is that true? Because it didn't come from this guy who thought I sang off key, or this person said, well, you didn't read my special scripture. My value comes from the Father. God is good. And that's the value that he has for you. That's the value that he has for you. And it's just a case of receiving. It's never, it's never been a case of can I have. Wrong question. <laughs> Wrong question. You're too late. You got it. It's like, how am I going to use this? How am I going to release this? How am I going to, if I'm at the end of the note, how am I going to, it might be just a touch. Change that guy's day. I'm going to bet his week, maybe even his life. You never know. It's that simple. So I just want you to know that Father has got nothing but good things for you. They're already in heaven. It's already been planned for. The checks have been picked up. You can't buy it. Because it's been paid with a price that you can't pay. Want to find out how valuable something is? What do we ask? Well, how much did that cost? Right? Like that. The more something is paid for, so, you know, the more cash it extracts, the more value it becomes. Stradivarius looks like a miniature banjo. How much are they worth? I don't know. Does anybody know the price? But they're, they're just crazy. Like three or four hundred dollars, I'm sure. No, the thousands. Hmm? What makes that so valuable? It's because of who crafted it. There aren't a whole bunch like this. It's one of a kind. It may look like this one, but it's one of a kind. So if that's true for something temporal, what does that say about you? You're one of a kind. You've been made this way on purpose, to do what only you can do, which really is the nice way of saying, you know what? Every one of us has something to do in the kingdom building process. Every one of us. We're not off the hook. But know this, that in him, we are more than able. It was interesting talking with Jane. We got to say, hey, Jane, she's in the lobby, right? This is a dangerous church to go to because the next thing you know, hey, hey, get open up by you. Yeah, that'd be great, sure. And Father just buoyed her up. Beautiful word. Beautiful word. So, so, so we're getting this, that God is good. Is that, is, is there any other way I could put this? Talk about Joseph, right, who was put in uh, a thingy in the ground, a cistern, I think they called it, and he sold into slavery and Potiphar's house and accused of doing nasty things he never did. And in the middle of all that stuff, and this goes over years, I think, I think it was seven or eight years, I don't, 
I don't have the exact number. But in the middle of all this stuff, he never lost sight of who God was to him. Isn't that a fact? Really nasty. I'm going to bet in that, you know, he ended up in a, in a, in a jail and all that stuff. That, you know, no cable vision. No hungry man dinners. Right? No window for the view. But he had everything. And I think it's out of that everything that we can walk. I'm going to read a piece of scripture for you. I don't want to go too long today. Good, and hear me say, good. <laughs> this is so good. And Father, before I release this piece of scripture, Father, I pray for each person in this house. It's got nothing to do with your background. It's got nothing to do with what you've been involved in or not been involved in. It's got nothing to do with how smart you are. It's got nothing to do with who you hang with. It's got everything to do with Father fashioning you just the way you are. You're like a Stradivarius. I'm going to give you the big picture. It's a familiar piece of scripture. My prayer is that as I release this word over you, because if something happens in familiarity, right, it become, becomes dull. God is good. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. So I just pray for a freshness over this piece of scripture. I pray that, um, and I had a picture of you this morning. You can do what you like. I'm not trying to force you anything. But just put out your, you know how, how a boat, when, when, they, when the, uh, uh, the winds are gentle, how they put out their sails to catch every breath, everything. And that's what I want for you. I want you to have everything because it's all been bought for it's all been paid for it's all there for you all i have to do is just in, in, put up your spiritual sail and say father i'm looking i want the full load can i pray that for you is that okay so i'm going to read this over you for i know the thoughts that i think toward you says the lord Thoughts of peace and not evil. To give you a future and hope. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. And I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That's all he's asking for. All your heart. Verse 14. I will. That's pretty definite. I will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back from your captivity. There's people in here today that are being held captive by different things. Maybe that's you this morning. Maybe that's something that's got you snarled up, tangled up. Something that's getting in your way. And most times, we know about it. But this is what it says. And I will bring you back from your captivity. After service, there's going to be a time of prayer. Maybe you need to be released. Maybe you're not familiar with Jesus. Good time to receive him. Ask him into your heart. It's just that simple. See, the, the hard work's already been done. It's just basically, yes, Lord, we step into that. You see, all Father ever wanted for you, this is all he wanted for you. You ready for it? His best. I don't think there's 2% milk in heaven. He wants his best for you. Everything that he has is yours. Now I'll bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. 
and I will bring you to the places from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Those places, those things that have held you captive, those situations, maybe those people, maybe it's financial, maybe it's marital, maybe it's, it's uh, spiritual, maybe whatever it is, you fill in the blank. Father, wherever that place where I find myself, today is freedom day. Doesn't that sound good? It's freedom day for you, and it's already been done. All he needs from you is, yes, Lord, that's all he needs. And so after services, people that will help you walk through that process. Walk through that process. Mm. So good, so good, so good. Well, I'd like to leave a, uh, release a, a blessing over you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing even right now. Even right now. Thank you, Jesus. Things are breaking off. They won't break off you if you want to hang on to them. You can take that home. But Father's in the delivery business. That can happen right in your chair this morning. Maybe for some of us it's going to happen when we come forward for prayer and say, I just need someone to agree with me. And we will. Let me release this over you. Is that a numbers? It's a beautiful blessing. You ready for it? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And so Father, I just thank you for this brief time that we've had together. Father, I just pray, Lord Jesus, that you help us to remember we can name our day there's nothing that's impossible when you're in us and you are. All we need to do is call on your name. Again, Father, I just thank you for the week that lies ahead. None of us know exactly what it's about. But Father, again, we can name the day. Those things that come to try and upset us, Father, we have power over that. I even just release spontaneous healing, even now. One of those things that we carry that don't serve us well. They're not working for us. They're not from you. You only have good things for your children. So I just release that over each and every one of you. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people said. Staring at the summer